We will, we will, we will eat you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Up Again, the show about overcoming life's challenges on and off the ice. I'm Alma Smith and together you and I are going to get to know some of the world's greatest ice skating stars here on the show, particularly to find out how they get up again when life knocks them down. You are in the right place if you're looking for some inspiration, some helpful advice perhaps, a few fun games. And I've even come up with a challenge. An important part of the show is going to hinge on you taking up the challenge. So let's see if you've got what it takes. This is up again. I'm joined by Nathan Chen, the Team USA figure skating superstar, also known as the Quad King because of his unbelievable gravity-defying trademark jumps. Now, Nathan is a two-time world champion a team event Olympic bronze medalist. He's also a three-time Grand Prix final champion and a five-time US champion, all at the age of only 21. Thanks for joining us, Nathan. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. So let's start with ice skating and why ice skating? Because you are terribly talented and seemed to have quite a few things going for yourself when you're a bit younger right so I began skating when I was three um, in Salt Lake City right at the rink that was produced for the Olympic Games in, in Salt Lake City um, and then due to the just the close proximity of the rink I was just always at the rink with my family and my family also liked skating so we ended up just making a sort of family event out of it um, and we would go to uh, the public ice skating sessions and just skate together um, and I like just fell in love immediately. I really, really loved being on the ice. I just thought it was so cool to be out there. Um, such a huge expense of just pure ice. I just thought that was incredible. So if we had your mom on the call, um, it just, to me, it seems like you were always just working so hard, being so productive, doing all of these things, um, really focused, really dedicated. Um, but if she was here, would she, um, let us in on, you know, you being not perfect in every respect. Is there anything that she had to kind of really hound you on? Or have you just always been uh, this dedicated from day one? No, absolutely not. I think, I mean, first of all, as a skater, as a, as a three-year-old boy, like you don't have really any true desires or true like understanding of what, like what it takes to be good or what you need to do to make, it, to make yourself good. So truthfully, it was just like, you know, mostly her that was guiding me along this journey. And, you know, fortunately, I had the talent for skating. And so it was something that she saw and was willing to, you know, sort of help foster or help help cultivate. Um, but I think, you know, as it starts, uh, I was sort of a lazy kid. <laughs> I can't, can't lie. You know, I was pretty lazy. I didn't really want to work that hard. Um, so I think not having, you know, I think having a very disciplined mother really helps, you know, train me to be a more disciplined adult. Um, and, you know, I think even now that's still a little bit of a fault of mine, but it's definitely become something I realize that I can't be if I want to be successful. So I have to keep, you know, pushing myself and working hard. Um, but it, it's just been great to be able to have, you know, a great family that has kept, kept me humble and geared. And then, of course, having my mom, who's, you know, really just done everything to help push me to work harder and, and do everything I need to be successful. Now, we need to find out more about what you enjoy doing in your spare time. Um, you know the stuff you do to lift your spirits, uh, to give you a bit of perspective? This is Every Day Up Again. What do you enjoy doing to help you unwind? Um, I like to, I recently started reading a lot more and I also uh, recently got an electric guitar. So that is currently what I've been doing to unwind. Are you going to play the music that you skate to at the next competition or anytime soon? Perhaps. I don't think I'm quite good enough yet, but that'd be cool. <laughs> I mean, you got you brought Rocket Man, that whole hip hop thing into it. At, at this stage, if you whip out an electric guitar and start playing your own music, I don't think anyone's going to be that shocked. <laughs> I mean, that'd be cool. Maybe it's something to consider maybe like five years down the line, but next year, probably not. It not not won't be yet. At that quality. Not quite okay. yet. It's not there yet. And what's your karaoke go-to song? 
Ooh, that's good. Um, I don't know. Uh, Come I think, on, okay, how- so at, at school, there was, like, this big thing with, like, the song Living on a Prayer, so I suppose that maybe now, but I don't know. That's a little, I, I don't know. That's that's the first thing on the top of my mind. <laughs> bon Jovi! <Look laughs> bon Jovi, <you>. yep. <laughs> I mean, you've been to Japan so many times. You yeah. should be pretty down with the karaoke setup by now. You know, I've actually never been to karaoke in Japan, which is kind of crazy. I'll definitely make sure I go next time I go to Japan. It's like saying you've been there and you haven't had ramen. I know, that's true. No, I, I, need a, I definitely need to step up my game. <laughs> okay, and then I need to ask you about your outfits, ne? Okay. Because <laughs> Vera Wang is in your comments. Uh, every, uh, does she comment on everything you post on Instagram? She's, yeah, she's up there. She's definitely one of my more, uh, you know, uh, immediate followers and <laughs> more like, you know, engaged followers. Just, I love the loyalty. It's, it's, yeah, uh, it's amazing. Um, that's pretty impressive. And, and she designs the stuff you wear. How involved are you? I'm like somewhat involved. She'll give me like a ton of ideas. So she'll like sketch up like 20, 30 design ideas. And then we'll kind of narrow down like even individual things that I like about individual costumes and then kind of put them together according to her her vision but uh her vision is not something that I really want to like step step into I trust her completely like I know that she'll do something great so that's kind of like how I've been approaching the costumes and you know honestly I, I love them they're all comfortable they're all like exactly what I need to perform well so uh I've been liking them and you're not big on the sequins why not huge on the sequins I don't know I've just never really been a huge on the sequins um I guess I don't know. I just like things that are more plain, simple, geometric. Um, nothing super, nothing super flashy, um, but things that are like interesting in their own right without forcing themselves to be interesting. NBA, okay. you yeah. are a huge fan. I've seen you retweeting Utah Jazz. They are doing so well this season. Have they you got are. anything to do with that? Um, I have nothing to do with that. They're killing it <laughs> themselves. I'm so happy for them. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how they how they continue playing this season. Did you play? Because I know that you did a lot of other stuff, but I didn't see basketball on the very long list of sports you played. Never. I never played basketball until, I mean, I picked, I kind of have played a little bit over the past like two years or so, but very like informally, very poorly. Um, But no, never really played basketball. It's just like, I think honestly, jazz also kind of was because that's like one of the main, like, you know, major major league sports in in utah utah doesn't really have that many besides and they have like college college sports like utah the U, U, U of U and byu um but as for like professional sports you know kind of jazz or real salt lake as well but jazz is definitely more mainstream so it's kind of it and you travel with the ball when you go to competitions is that right yeah that's like a recent thing that i've done i found that it like it's nice. Like I've, I've always had like struggle figuring out what to do for warmups and I feel like doing tons of skating specific stuff. Like I'm about to get on the ice and do skating specific stuff. Like, I don't really feel like I need to go do more skating specific stuff. Um, and it's fun. It just like relaxes me, puts me in a good mental state, makes me happy. Um, challenge myself. It also like works on hand eye and keeps me warm. So kind of a, a good mix of everything. And if you could swap bodies for one day, not like Freaky <laughs> Friday, but Freaky Friday right, with another right. sports person, who would yeah. it be and why? That's a good question. Um, huh, that's hard. I mean, on the vein of basketball, I'd probably switch with like, I don't know, Steph Curry or something like that. To be able to shoot like him would be pretty insane. Um, but to be able to, I don't know, that's a really good question. That's hard. There's just too many sport icons, you know, like too many good options. So it's hard Give to us a short list. Steph, okay. number two. Okay, let's say like Serena Williams. That'd be pretty cool. And she's a fan um, of yours. How cool is that? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know at all. That was, that was like a very welcoming surprise. That was really cool. Is that is that one of the people that kind of tagged you and you went? Yeah, I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's very starstruck. That was really cool. <laughs> Who's your, um, who's your coolest famous fan who's the who's the person who is a fan of yours that you went like i mean definitely serena um definitely uh vera as well like come on that's pretty crazy yeah and it's rare that she also used to skate is there anyone else okay. sorry i interrupted you that you want to add no, to that list safe serena um, i mean of course lebron james would be crazy federer of course um i don't know maybe like Ovechkin, that's pretty cool. He's a pretty amazing hockey player as well. 
I don't know. That's kind of my short list as of now. I'm sure the, the long list is, is much more intensive. Has <laughs> some pretty impressive individuals. Um, I don't think anyone would say no thank you to that opportunity. <laughs> Going to Pyeongchang, let's talk about that because you grew up in this a city that hosted the Winter Olympics. Um, even when you were 10 years old doing TV interviews, people were saying to you, 2018, 2018. I mean, that date, those Olympic Games, that moment must have meant so much to you, just kind of going there and being there and this you know, long journey that's kind of led you to that point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, skating is is truly my life, and I, it's something that I've loved, loved, loved since I st- like first stepped on the ice. Um, and then, of course, growing up in Olympic Town, like that, just makes it you know that like epitomizes the dream of what the Olympics should look like. And um, and I, I just had that vision of the Olympics and something that I'd wanted to go to since I was just first stepped on the ice. Um, and finally, making that a reality was just incredible, and being able to you know experience the games firsthand as an athlete to to sort of follow in the footsteps of some of the Olympic greats that, you know, had, had done that before. So just, just for myself to know what it must feel like to be an Olympian was pretty incredible in itself. Um, But it was also just a terrifying event, you know, something that I'd been looking forward to my whole life that I really wanted to perform well at, but it just put so much stress on myself and so much pressure on myself to, to perform that I like had never really experienced before. And I didn't really even know how to experience, or I didn't know how to adapt to that situation. So you go out onto the ice to perform your short program. Mm -hmm. Take me to that experience of being out there um, in this this moment that you've just explained was, you know, so crucial. Um, But in hindsight, you feel, you know, you you were not properly aligned. And and I think you've said before that you were just um, not in the right frame of mind. Tell, Mm -hmm. Tell me about the experience. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I was just, uh, I was just a little scared, <laughs> truthfully speaking. And I think once you start getting scared, it's just like you can't really uh, attack things as well as you should. Um, and just that, like, obviously takes a huge hit on your confidence. And I think having confidence going to events is, is so, you know, so vital to being able to, to perform well. Um, yeah, I remember just stepping into that short program competition, like knowing what I had to do, knowing I was capable of doing it, but just like really unsure if I was going to be able to do it. Um, and I think that sort of just, you know, related to me having a pretty rough skate, um, and just, you know, not, not putting myself in a position to start on the ice where I would like to be. Um, and then the the rest of the program, we're just trying to like, you know, just, just stay on your feet. Just, just don't, you know, fall again, don't fall again. And unfortunately, you know, that just kept happening, but, uh, it is what it is, you know, and and I've, I've learned quite a lot from it. And you walked off the ice and said you went straight to your room to go sleep because you'd already kind of shifted gears into preparing for the free skate. Uh, I mean, yeah, you could say that, but more, more so just because I was sad. <laughs> you know, I was just like pretty, I was like just not happy. I wanted to um, just, you know, spend time by myself and not really have to talk to people. I didn't really want to talk to media. I didn't really want to talk to, you know, friends, family, coaches. I just wanted to go by myself. Um, and honestly, that was nice, you know, just having time to just completely be by myself, like just relaxing in my bed, not doing absolutely anything was quite nice. Um, and it was obviously, you know, upsetting, but it, it is what it is. And, you know, I was I'm I was able to come through, come through in the long program, at least uh, skate a little bit better in the long and, uh, you know, learn quite a lot from that short. Yeah, I mean, I know so many people who've gone through kind of crushing moments in their life, and that is not the way most people respond. So the fact that you say that you went to go be by yourself, um, I don't know, my, I feel like my thoughts would be so noisy that, that you found solace in your own company. And that's pretty powerful. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I never even thought about that, but yeah, I guess that's, that's fair. Um, I think that's just kind of how I've always been though. Like, I just like to, if, if in, in uh, times of, you know, high stress or in times of, you know, disappointment, I just like to, you know, in, internalize it myself before I, you know, begin to, discuss it with others and then you used that experience to fire up one of the most talked about performances at that event you went back out on the ice which some people might find daunting and the first quad was just spectacular 
<laughs> did you feel then okay i'm back here here we are this is me i'm I've, i'm mm-hmm. i can hold on to this again mm-hmm. i think that after that just that day of just you know relaxing by myself i just felt a lot i felt a lot more refreshed both physically and mentally um and so i kind of just came in with a lot with just like a better mindset and and more just real just a more relaxed approach um and more just of of a gratefulness to be there to be at the olympics to compete on that ice you know truthfully speaking it was you know just just pure luck that i made the long you know i should considering how poorly i skated in the short like it wouldn't have been unexpected for me to not even have made that long program so just the fact that i had that second opportunity was just so 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 great for me um and i really just utilized that to just you know put myself in a position where i was like man just be happy that you're here just be happy that you have this opportunity you know it's it's a very um you know uncommon one so the fact that i get it it's just like you can't you can't waste it um and and even actually actually after the short program of course i think it's terrible to say but like right after the short program it's like i don't even want to do the long i just want to go home like this is terrible i just want to i just want to leave um but then i was like also you know come on this is the olympics like you you can't be thinking that way um and so like you know having having then just been like switching my mindset to being like you know just be grateful be happy be present is is that your little mantra is that how you stay present be grateful be happy <laughs> I mean, maybe not in those exact words, but yeah, that's the general, the the general vibe or the general gist of what I, what I tell myself. And then you go on after um, you skate beautifully in the long program, world title, bounce back. What a story. This guy is amazing. This crazy run of events where everything you do just, I mean, and the margins that you're winning by, um, that's, I mean, that is spectacular. That is, I mean, what a way to get up again. Um, do you sometimes now look back on that experience and as you said, you wouldn't change anything, but also even feel a sense of, ah, I don't want to use the word fate, but I mean, now that your story has turned up so beautifully, there is something so amazing about that because I'm sure so many other people have said to you uh, that gave me hope, that gave me something to hold on to. Right. I mean, truthfully speaking, at this point in time, I would not change anything. Like I, I'm perfectly at peace and happy with the way things went. Like that's um, just, you know, I think having had that experience helped me grow a lot as an athlete um, and I grow a lot as a person too. Um, but yeah, I think in hindsight, like, yeah, for sure. I could have worked with, uh, with, a, with a sports psych. I could have done a lot more things, um, in terms of, in terms of like mental training to prepare myself. And anyways, you know, I think that we all athletes put a lot of emphasis into physically training their bodies, but not like really much into mentally training their bodies. And that's just like half of the game. So, you know, I definitely could have put a little bit more emphasis on that, but I just didn't know, you know, that was, I was so new into this, into this sort of like, I was uh, two years ago, I was barely making, you know, the world team. So like, this was pretty just like such a huge step in such a short period of time that I wasn't really, I didn't know that I needed to find these resources. You know, I didn't know what I didn't know. So that was a problem, yeah. I think. And, and yeah. you know, and obviously having had more experience and like knowing that there's a lot of other variables that do, you know, impose a lot of, a lot of meaning or a lot of, you know, impact on, on performance. It's like, okay, now I could have, I could have addressed that earlier. Now it's time for Up Again fans to take part in our Up Again challenge. Here is a message from French skater Ramon Ponsard. Oh. Quick message for you, Nathan. Yes. Okay. Hey, bro. So I heard that you are doing a video with the ISU, and obviously, you cannot do that without me being in it. And also, I can't wait to be back in Cali to train with you. I wish you all the best, and I'll see you soon that's awesome thank you so much for doing that i'm gonna give him crap for that though because i'm like on facetime with him every day and i'm gonna like i'll bring it up when i talk to him next and and he didn't he didn't warn you he didn't give the game away no not at all no not at all he's good at keeping secrets apparently okay so the up again challenge is an opportunity for skating fans to show us that they have what it takes to be a pro in order to participate you don't need actual ice all you need to do is film yourself doing the following levels Ramon has opened the floor by doing a half rotation level one level two full rotation level three one and a half rotation and level four double rotation so shoot yourself doing this uh, see if you can match him keep up with him 
post it on Instagram or TikTok, hashtag up again challenge and tag ISU figure skating. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for our favorites and feature it on the next episode of up again. Now we are going to play wrong answers only. It's okay. quite quick. You need okay. to be on top of things. I'll ask you as many questions as possible in 60 seconds, and you can okay. only give me wrong answers, all right? Okay. Practice question, which month are we in? We're in May. Okay. Was that right? Question, question one. Are you ready? Uh, no, definitely not. Question two. What's your name? Uh, John. Question three. What do you do for a living, John? Uh, I do, um, I'm a research scientist. How do you spell ISU, John? Uh, USI. <laughs> Name an orange fruit. Um, I don't know, pineapple. What do you put in a toaster? Uh, ketchup. What does Steph Curry play? Hockey. What's your sporting discipline? My sporting discipline, gymnastics. What do you brush your teeth with? Um, a rock. <laughs> How many Olympic rings are there? There are 10. What are skate guards? They go on your feet um, to protect you against the friction of the boot. What sound do skates make on the ice? A uh, clinging sound. What's the name of your signature move? Um, a double. <laughs> <laughs> what color is your hair? It is blonde. What's your nickname? uh jack i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> what's the capital of the united states prague what do you skate on um cement if it's not day it's it is windy complete the queen lyric we will we will we will eat you <laughs> <laughs> Well done. <laughs> Thank you. We will eat you the soundtrack to the next zombie movie. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, that's all we have time for today. Thank you to Nathan Chen. Uh, you have been awesome. Thank you so much for joining us on the first episode of Up Again. It was lovely to have you here. Um, have you got advice for anyone who's battling at the moment um, who are just not getting up again and uh, need a burst of inspiration from the perspective of being in that position you know ultimately you know yourself better than anyone else but at the same time it is always extremely useful to communicate how you're feeling and what you're feeling to people that you know care about you and if there will no matter what there will be people that care about you um you may need to do a little bit a little bit of soul searching or whatever that is to find those people but there will be people for sure 100 percent that care about you and want to help you and everyone's perspective and everyone's experiences are different. So there's going to be something that you've never tried or never even thought about before that will in inherently just help you. So I think that's like, you know, one, just, you know, do what feels right. You know, there's no, not necessarily a wrong answer or right answer with that. If you want to just lay in bed all day, that's fine. You know, as long as that's like something that you want to do, but at the same time, if you do do that, also realize that there are other approaches and, you know, people that want to help you. So, you know, reach out and, and communicate that. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Nathan. We hope you'll join us again next month for the next episode with another very special skating guest. Make sure you check out the podcast and more Up Again stories on isu.org forward slash up again. We'd love to hear your Up Again stories, so share them with us using the hashtag. And that has been our first episode. Goodbye. <laughs>